So the question that I'm going to pose today is why are some people more attractive to mosquitoes than others? It's a, it's a scientific question that, um, that many lay members of the public ask themselves. It's the one case of a scientific experiment that everybody does. So whenever I talk about my work in recent years, people come to me with their stories about my mother is the one who's always bitten. And we invite her to outdoor parties so that she can receive all the bites and, and protect the rest of us. And wherever I go in the world, whether it's uh, Tanzania or California or Europe, I hear these stories and it sort of fascinates me um, about what it is that makes some people more attractive than others. And so what we've been doing is trying to understand the problem both from the point of view of the female mosquito. What is the female mosquito doing? Uh, what is it within the mosquito that drives her to select particular humans? And then also, what is it in humans? What signals are we sending that makes us either magnets for mosquitoes or repellents for mosquitoes? And so before we get to the question of why some people are more attractive than others, we should just talk about the behavior. So this is a videotape of one of my students exposing a few centimeters of the skin of her forearm. Uh, you wouldn't do the experiment on this scale, but when you go outside, uh, the mosquitoes will find you. So it's a really tiny patch of skin. And so mosquitoes are using cues, the heat coming from her arm, the moisture coming from her arm, um, and most importantly, probably the smell coming from her arm. They are then puncturing the skin, probing around with their siphoning organ, uh, trying to locate a capillary. And you can see that they fill up enormously with human blood. So they'll increase their body weight two to three fold. So imagine if you're, I'll use uh, American units, if you're you know, a 100 pound woman, at the end of dinner you get up and you're now two or 300 pounds. So it's an enormous amount of blood that these females are taking in. And so why, why are they doing this? What, what drives them to do it? And so the answer is that they're effectively sterile without this blood meal. So a female without access to blood will never lay any eggs. From this one blood meal where she's filled up two or three microliters of your blood, she'll produce between 50 and 100 mosquitoes. So every time you feed a mosquito, you're producing another 50 to 100 mosquitoes, half of whom are female who will go on to bite other people. And what you see also happening on the skin there, of course, everyone is familiar with this. this is, it is a worldwide issue that people are bitten by mosquitoes, that you see the red itchy welts coming up. They're able to do this behavior uh, with great sneakiness, right? You don't, you don't often notice that you've bitten until long after the female has left. And the only residue she leaves is that red itchy bite. Here's a picture of my arm um, in the laboratory. So in the, in the West, in the US, um, in Europe, uh, mosquitoes leave this irritating, itchy red welt that can become infected. And they can keep you up at night because they buzz in your ear when they're hunting you. And that's sort of the extent of the problem that we face. Uh, but as Peter foreshadowed in the introduction, of course in many parts of the world, mosquitoes are much more dangerous than producing a red itchy bite. So uh, we work on the dengue vector mosquito Aedes aegypti. And so there's new numbers out that um, upwards of 390 million people are infected every year. About 100 million will actually develop symptoms. The death rate is 25,000. The numbers for malaria are much more stark, so malaria uh, vectored by a different mosquito, kills uh, many, many people in sub-Saharan Africa. And, and just as a case study that it isn't just the tropics that could be affected, there's this incredible epidemiological story of West Nile virus, which had never been seen in the West, Western Hemisphere until 1999. We think that a jet plane arrived um, at JFK, and either a person got out, infected with West Nile, or a mosquito got out infected with West Nile. And so you can see in these maps in 1999, there were a few cases around JFK and the states around it. The following year, it began to spread. They found incidences of West Nile virus in animals, uh, mostly birds, and in people. The following year, it had spread um, halfway across the United States. And by 2002, there's very few states where you don't have West Nile cases. And so last year, there were um, over 5,000 cases and just a little under 300 deaths. So a completely new virus, vectored by mosquitoes that have lived here for centuries, just needed to pick up a virus and then could spread it very effectively. So these are some of the reasons that we think 
The neurobiology of how a female mosquito finds a human is fascinating. It's also really important to understand it so that we can let them still bite us, perhaps, but not make us sick, would be the idea. And so how do we deal with mosquitoes historically? There's been different uh, attempts in human history to eliminate mosquitoes. So we used to have malaria uh, throughout southern Europe and the southern United States. It was eradicated. It remains a really persistent foe throughout the world. So here's a truck in New Delhi spraying pesticides, so insecticide. Uh, this is one mechanism by which you get rid of um, biting mosquitoes. However, what's coming out of the back of that truck is a neurotoxin. And so if you stand too close to the back of the truck, you won't be killed, but you'll be quite sick. Um, and unfortunately, the mosquitoes, they're very good at what they do, um, and they have outwitted humans many times. And so many insecticides that are being sprayed, the mosquitoes have evolved resistance to it. So you can spray as much neurotoxin as you like, and they'll become resistant to it. So one other trick that people use that's been highly effective is bed nets. So you merely, many mosquitoes bite at night, and so you can protect yourself and your children by, by merely sleeping underneath um, a bed net, so air still gets through a little bit. The, the net is in, treated with um, insecticide. Any mosquito that tries to come through will be knocked down. And this has been highly effective um, at reducing malaria transmission. However, in parts of South, Southeast Asia, it's become apparent that the mosquito has outsmarted us once again. So they said, you know what, if everyone is sleeping under bed nets, let's just bite in the afternoon. Let's become day biters, because they won't walk around with bed nets during the day. And so I think that the lesson that mosquitoes teach us is that their survival depends on getting a blood meal. They are effectively sterile without it. And so understanding all aspects about how they obtain that blood meal is gonna be necessary. Finally, one thing that, that, that um, people do mostly in the Western world is spray their entire body with this small molecule, DEET, or picaridin, um, which can temporarily ward off bites. So if you coat your entire body, you can probably get four to six hours of protection. Hasn't gotten great traction in the developing world because you really need to coat every centimeter of your body with these chemicals to protect yourselves from bites. And my laboratory and many other labs around the world are trying to figure out how does this stuff work? Could we come up with a better solution that you could just wear in a bracelet rather than having to coat every centimeter of your skin with this stuff. So what makes us so attractive to humans? So we present this multimodal image. So first, visual. I'm wearing high contrast clothing against the background. That's the first cue. We move. Um, we also stink. So humans give off a distinctive um, body odor that's highly attractive to mosquitoes. We also exhale carbon dioxide, a really potent attractant for mosquito behavior. Um, and if we are alive, we're giving off body heat. And so this combination of cues is an extremely potent signal to, to bring female mosquitoes toward humans. And so to the question of, are some people really more attractive than others, or are some people just complainers? Are they just, is, is there a real effect? So here are some field studies where uh, volunteers were asked to sleep in different structures out in the field in Africa. Um, and they would count how many mosquitoes visited each structure. So again, it's a, it's a whole human being. It's a, it's a big multimodal stimulus. The entire human being sleeping in the tent, snoring heavy or light or female or male, kind of a complicated naturalistic experiment. But the results are really clear. So the blue bar represents the really lucky person in the group who attracted very, very few mosquitoes to the tent. And all of the other people attracted a large number of mosquitoes to the tent. And many other groups have replicated this. It is a real phenomenon that, for instance, your mother really is much more attractive to mosquitoes than others. So what accounts for this? Uh, there are a few theories that have been tested scientifically and a burgeoning number of non-scientific theories that may have some merit. So diet is commonly listed as something depending on what you eat. Particularly bananas are said to influence your sensitivity, garlic, Alcohol, there is actually an experiment I'll show you in a minute, that if you drink beer, speaking in the town where beer is part of the national economy, can greatly increase your um, attractiveness to mosquitoes. Uh, B vitamins is another folkloric element that's said to increase your or decrease your attractiveness to mosquitoes. And then um, there's a host of other markers. 
if you're generally healthy, you may be more attractive to mosquitoes. If you're stressed, you'd be less attractive. Um, genetics, there may be this component that attractiveness to mosquitoes will run in the family in some heritable genetic way. Skin thickness, this is another parameter that's been thought of. If your skin is very thick, perhaps you'll receive fewer bites. Um, how much you breathe, because carbon dioxide is a potent attractant. Um, your body temperature, if you run hot as a human, you'll be more attractive to mosquitoes. How old you are, many people think that children are more attractive to mosquitoes. Many people think women are more attractive to mosquitoes. Uh, there's been some ideas thrown ar around about race, ethnicity, some ideas about women who are ovulating will be more attractive at certain points in the menstrual cycle or if you're pregnant when you become your temperature runs hotter and you breathe more um, and then finally of course the king which is body odor there's good science about that body odor produced by skin bacteria um, and then the number one idea that people email me about is that they've cracked the code is there's something about blood type so if you're typo negative that that means something um, and also blood sugar, that someone has sweet blood and this makes them then a target for mosquitoes. And finally, blood nutrients. So which one of these ideas is correct? There's a lot of complicated ideas. There's a lot of environmental effects here, some genetic effects here, some demographic effects. Which one of these? There is clearly something going on. What is going on? Here's the beer experiment. You put people into a tent. There's always tents. These are field experiments in Africa. Someone's sleeping in a tent. He's just drunk a liter of beer one night. The next light, he drinks a liter of water. Um, on the right, the black bar is showing that that person is no more attractive than control air when he's drunk water, and he's significantly more attractive after having imbibed um, a pint of beer. Just something to keep in mind as you go around Leuven tonight. Um, so what might it be that, that causes mosquitoes to pick out different people? So first of all, the mosquitoes that spread diseases to humans vastly prefer humans to non-human animals. And they can sort of read out a trace of the chemistry of the person. At the top is a trace of the odor of a guinea pig separated chromatographically. On the bottom is a trace of human odor separated chromatographically. You see some peaks that are the same, but you see many peaks where the human has a huge amount of a chemical and the guinea pig has nothing and vice versa. So there's this signature that mosquitoes must be able to read. And so our idea is that there's something going on between the inside of the person, how the skin bacteria then produce body odor, which allows the mosquito to get a glimpse at what's going on inside the person. And so we're testing this in our laboratory in New York, not by putting people in tents, but by exposing a little piece of skin so we can really control the experiment. So we can control everything except the body odor. Um, and we fly mosquitoes upwind toward these people, and you get an index. If you have an index of 80, it means you're extremely attractive to mosquitoes. If you have an index of 10, you're unattractive to mosquitoes. And we can show here um, in red the people at the right are four times more attractive than the people at the left. So we can really uh, begin to look into the blood of these people. So I'm not going to be providing you with an answer. I'm proposing that there are a lot of questions and a lot of possible solutions to the problem. Something is going on with these people that alters how they smell to mosquitoes that, that, that the mosquitoes can reproducibly sense from week to week, year to year. So something that I can tell you about, we have a satisfying answer, is why mosquitoes prefer humans over non-humans. So this is an experiment where people collected, Laura Harrington collected mosquitoes in Thailand and asked what was their last meal. 99% of the mosquitoes she caught had fed on human blood. She found a few that had fed on dog or cow, but there was this incredible bias toward feeding on humans. So given that there's lots and lots of other animals in the village, the mosquitoes were selectively hunting out the humans. So how are the mosquitoes telling apart the scent of a dog or a cow or a human? How are they decoding it? So I have to get technical for a second and tell you that there are two major gene families in the nose of insects that are responsible for smelling everything that insects smell. On the left, the odorant receptors, and on the right, the ionotropic receptors. So we made a mosquito in which we eliminated all of the odorant receptors. So we sort of blind half of the sense of smell of the mosquitoes and ask, what happens? If I blinded all of you, there would be a reliable result. You wouldn't be able to see me, right? So if I blind half of the olfactory system of the mosquito, what would be the result? And so uh, we carried out um, experiments, uh, really technically de demanding experiments, putting a human arm in one port, 
a live guinea pig in the other port and asking, will these animals that only have half of a functioning sense of smell be able to tell the difference? And so um, the top two bars is the behavior of normal mosquitoes. And so you can see that they're strongly biased toward preferring the human hand. If the bar were to the left, they would prefer the guinea pig. So these are anthropophilic mosquitoes that specifically hunt humans. We take away this one gene using tricky genetics in the mosquito, and we now move the balance of attraction right toward the middle. So these mosquitoes have a vague preference for humans, but the preference has shifted much more towards zero. Depending on whose hand is in the box, they actually prefer the guinea pig to the human. So we've discovered a single gene that explains from the mosquito's point of view, are you human or not human? And we can do the same experiment to make it super controlled by wrapping pantyhose around a guinea pig and collecting guinea pig scent and putting pantyhose on a human and collecting human scent so that we can control really carefully that all that the mosquitoes are sensing is odor on nylon stockings. And again, you can see that the normal mosquitoes really can, can perform the trick to find humans and prefer humans strongly over guinea pig scent. And these mosquitoes that are missing one gene are confused. They prefer the humans much less. And so we begin to have a picture of how mosquitoes are making decisions about whom to bite. And we're really standing on um, the threshold of a modern age of genetics in the mosquito where we can try to figure out what's important to them, what cues are they using when they hunt us. And then because translating basic science into action is really important, we wish to take this knowledge and then develop you know, the wristband that will attack the sensory pathway that's, that's most important. And I thank you very much.